Little girl had a flat tire, I had to pop up before getting the shop. I don't exactly recall where we left off with this thing. Um, we'd done some lab scoping and realized that the engine was out of time. And oil pressure is a problem on these engines. So if you lose oil pressure, you usually take out the top end. The camshaft's the last thing to get oil. Everything gets scored up. This engine runs quiet. Uh, for a pair of four cylinders, it runs good. Doesn't run good for a V8. It's not not in harmony. So off camera, I went ahead and checked oil pressure, and this is a four wheel drive. Very difficult to get to the oil pressure port. But we we have a Chevrolet dealership too on this property. It's Ford and Chevrolet. Imagine that. And over at the Chevy store, they have these things. I guess checking the oil pressure on a Chevy is next to impossible. So these these little Kent Moore tools, a couple different ones, and this just happens to fit the oil filter on this truck FLH20. It's perfect, perfect fit. So put my oil pressure gauge on there and ran it. And uh, you know the owner said, you know, don't run the truck too long because the oil pressure light will come on. And I ran it for a long time. When I first started it cold, I had. 60 pounds of oil pressure and it ran for 30 minutes even as bad as it runs it ran that long and i had um no lower than 30 pounds i was expecting you know, 10 pounds eight pounds something like that so we got to talking about it and the guy really wants to put the truck back on the road doesn't want to have any troubles with it and i said well this thing's got to come apart i get time to come off of it uh, and see what's going on you know see why it's out of time um, he said we're not fooling with that because it's pretty sludgy inside. It's been sitting for two years and it's a lot of sludge because I took the VVT solenoids and swapped them to see if you know the problem you know moved. Nothing, nothing changed. This right hand bank still runs really bad. <clears throat> Basically, what's happening is it's fueling at the wrong time. So we're, we're firing all the injectors and spraying fuel when it's not. It doesn't want fuel. Uh, so he said, "Stop! No, don't forget about it." <clears throat> Let's put an engine in it. I want many trouble-free miles out of this truck from here out, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put the engine in. Now I've got a whole bunch of videos of pulling engines, so I'm not gonna film pulling this engine. Um, plus, it's gonna be aggravating because I'm sure you've noticed by now that I'm in my typical my little flat bay here. So I've got to pull the engine out on a creeper laying on my back um, and just you know it's what I gotta do you gotta do what you gotta do uh, this lifts tied up with this engine and it's you know it's on its last leg anyway and I've got to use this to lift to pull a cab so I can't afford to break the lift picking the trucks up and down because um, it, it'll pull it'll you know it works fine for pulling cabs even as Ratted, raggedy as it is. So I thought I had some footage of this truck, and um, it was one of these deals where I just started on it before I got the camera out. I was going to do a little backtracking. Uh, I've looked high and low, can't find it. So we're going to do a lot of backtracking because uh, I'm ready to replace the engine in this thing, and um, we're getting ready to cross the point of no return. So this truck came in uh, let's see what was it doing uh, running rough. runs really bad and uh, no power she's a real dog so we'll try to run through this pretty quickly because this computer is about to restart love these windows 8.1 He's got a scheduled restart that I'm not wanting to do. So 
Let's see what our codes were. I don't even remember what they were. I think it was a P0340. Cam sync or something like that. <clears throat> this was the biggest code. I've been doing a lot of work on this, so a lot of these other codes were set by me. But CMP circuit fault. Uh, so just briefly what I did was I did a power balance test and the entire right side was skipping. Which, you know, it's not an indicator of a, you know, a bad ignition coil or a spark plug or something like that. I mean, the whole bank's down. Um, but I did, a, you know, I went to low HMI, I pulled a spark plug out, looked at it, just moved the coil and, you know, it made no difference whatsoever. So... If someone works on one of these engines and doesn't put it back together correctly, you can get the general rule of thumb is let's say it's out of time, which is what I suspect on this engine. The general rule of thumb is uh, if it's one tooth off either bank, then it'll run off at idle and run fine going down the road. If it's two teeth off, it'll run like crap all the time. And if it's three teeth off, you bend stuff. So this one. This one runs bad the whole time. So I got out the lab scope and I looked at the cam signals and they should be on top of each other and we're offset. So the right hand bank is is out of time. I swapped the VCT solenoids to see what would happen because you know, I got a known good one on the left side. No change, um, but the a lot of sludge in the engine. So that's where we're at. That's where we're going to pick up placing this engine. I'll be honest with you, I have no idea where we left off with this truck behind me. Um, so, I'm just going to pick up, pick up where I'm at. Currently, I'm doing some lab scoping. I'm not a big scope guy. I don't fool with this stuff too much. I usually just chuck parts at cars. Now this one is uh, a little bit of an issue, so got to do as much as I can before I start taking it apart. But there's clearly an issue here between this red and orange trace, yellow trace, whatever color you want to call it. And I just happen to have a known good truck that I can compare this to. So let's move the whole setup from this truck to this truck and we'll take a look at the pair. This is a four channel scope. all four channels so this will be the left hand cam channel two channel one it was going to be the right hand cam Channel 3 is going to be the number one ignition pool. So we can identify the cylinder. So we can identify cylinder 1. And then channel 4 is going to be our amp clamp so we can look at uh, all the cylinder firing. Our positive wires are all eight coils. The negative trigger for coil 1. Sensor feed for cam one. And the sensor signal for cam two. Let's signal back to the PCM. And we'll, uh, we'll fire this back up and see what it looks like.
So I did some thinking on this over the weekend. Today is uh, Monday the 15th. Yeah, yesterday was Mother's Day. Uh, 2017, the year of our Lord. Um, I decided, you know, I said I was going to pull this engine out in this flat bay here. But um, the more I thought about it, it's, it's really difficult to crawl around on the floor on these and this front end is a lot more difficult to come off to bring it out the front so I've decided I'm just gonna lift the cab um, this is a super fast job I mean I'm just taking one complete engine taking a complete engine out putting a complete engine in um, and believe it or not taking the cab off is least intrusive than that now on these models you know there's pros and cons to everything the front end comes off real easy on these, but the body bolts are a pain in the neck. Whereas this one, uh, the front end is difficult to get off, but the body is really easy to get off of there. So, I'm going to roll this forward into this bay and bring this around to the lift bay.
had to bear with me. I got to talk over the fan. Rather warm today. This motor's ready to come out. We've got everything loosey goosey. And this will give you kind of an idea of what goes on. Um, cab removed for clarity purposes only. So get a good look at what's happening when one of these is coming out if you've never, never dealt with anything like this before. The first thing I'm going to do is push the truck out from under the cab. Because the radiator will be really close to the boom and uh, difficult to work with, so I'll just, I'll just roll it forward and then we'll start removing it. show you what we're dealing with here which is a never-ending source of frustration if you if you've already got your engine crane hooked to the engine and, and it's buried inside of here but we're hung up on these two dial pins one there and one on the other side so it's not broke loose at the bottom or broke loose at the top so basically what I've got to do is get this thing freed up before I can go any further. So I'm just taking a pry bar. And gently, I don't want to break anything. This transmission is aluminum. Freeing it from the dial pins. So that dial pin's free now. This one's still hung up pretty good. There we go. So now we're free of that down there.
so there's a couple little housekeeping items I gotta take care of before I can set the new engine, placement engine into the chassis. Uh, it makes for a, a better job. Uh, the job, the longevity is greater. I don't have to worry about it coming back for something silly. <clears throat> Basically what I'm talking about is all that surface rust and crud on that bell housing. Gotta get that off of there. So you gotta whiz that off of there with a scotch bright pad. And the frame where the motor mounts sit, gotta get all that crud off of there. Because I don't want the motor mounts sitting, they won't sit in the exact same spot. Uh, they may sit a little bit different. They, they may even sit in the right spot, but any of that dirt under there is just like having marbles under underneath your shoe. It's no good. So I want to get up, clean that off, get that cleaned up, clean that off. I'll do the same thing with this. The starter shim. I'll clean all the rust off of that. All the crusties. And then last, but not least, I got to re-index the, the ring gear to the torque converter there. So the spot on the torque converter is kind of iffy. The spot on the place plate, it's nice and bright. You can see it. But I haven't turned that torque converter and I have not turned the, the crankshaft on the old engine. So I'm just going to sit it back on the old engine and make sure that my paint dot is down and if it is I'm just gonna make a better paint mark on that torque converter because uh, it, it's it's good price to put them back where they came from I mean it's you know it'll run if it's not but there's some engines that they'll vibrate horribly if you don't get them right back where they were and um, when I took this engine out I took it out with a, I took the harness off of it but uh, it's extremely difficult to get to that low oil level sensor. So I'm going to actually put the harness on here before I set this engine back into the chassis. So we'll carry on. We'll uh, get that cleaned up. Get the thing swapped over and put it in. Take that off. I just want to take this dirt off. I want to take the undercoating off. 